Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. We are kicking off this week of meals with Mississippi pot roast, and I have actually made Mississippi chicken thighs before, and I'll make sure to link that video somewhere in the description box for you guys. But in my crock pot, I have a three pound chuck roast, and to it, I've added one package of brown gravy, or you could also use au jus as well. And then you're also going to add a package of dry ranch seasoning mix, and you're just gonna sprinkle it over the roast. This is probably the easiest and most flavorful pot roast recipe that I've ever had. Next, I'm gonna add some butter. I'm just gonna add half a stick of butter. The original recipe calls for a stick of butter, unsalted, um, but honestly, I've done it with a stick of butter and half a stick of butter, and you really can't tell the difference, so why not just save the calories? And then the last thing that you're gonna add are these peppers, and I always say it wrong, Pepper pepperoncinis, I think. Um, so Howard and I really like these peppers, so I always add more than what it calls for. Um, it says six peppers. I usually add uh, maybe double that, and you're just gonna lay them on top. All right, guys, so I have all of my peppers in here. In case you're wondering, these peppers are not spicy at all, at least to us anyway. They just add a really good flavor. So I'm gonna cover up my crock pot and I'm going to cook this on low for about eight hours. So it's been about eight hours and here is the pot roast. It is so tender, it's falling apart. So here is our, well, here's Howard's plate. So he's got the roast, he's got some rice, and the peppers, and then I made some greens. And the greens that I used are from Trader Joe's. I actually used two bags of these. I went to Trader Joe's recently and picked these up, and I'll make sure to link that haul so you guys can check it out. But I used to buy these all the time, and I haven't seen them in a long time, and now they're back. It's a mix of mustard, turnip, collards, and spinach. And I'm not a big fan of spinach, but there's not a lot of spinach in this bag, so. Anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so we are having breakfast for dinner tonight. I made some scrambled eggs, and how I make my eggs is with um, cheese and onions, but I don't always have fresh onions in the house. So I have been doing this for years. I have been using these French fried onions, not necessarily caramelized, but that's what I had in my pantry. The regular ones work as well. So all I do is um, scramble my eggs in a bowl, and then I just add these caramelized onions, and then when I add it to my skillet, it's all in there. And then I had some fresh mushrooms that I needed to use, so I had sauteed some fresh mushrooms, added those in, and then um, I added in this white cheddar cheese as well. And then I had some bacon, so I cooked my bacon. And then um, using up these grand biscuits that I had in the freezer. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am making sausage Alfredo, and this is the sausage that I'm making. I know I've made this one time before. So all I've done so far is just um, slice up the sausage. I put it in my pan here, and I let it get nice and brown. To that, I am adding some heavy whipping cream, and I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. So I'm adding that in, and then I'm just going to let it come to a boil. And then after it comes to a boil, I'm gonna add in my pasta that I've cooked. I've cooked some penne pasta and drained it, and I'm gonna add in some cheese and some Cajun seasoning, but I will come back as soon as this comes to a boil. So my mixture has come to a boil, and I'm going to add in my cheese and my Cajun seasoning. And my pasta. I 
I'm just giving it a stir and then I'm going to remove it from the heat and let it thicken up a little bit. So here is the pasta. I ended up putting in another half a cup of cheese because we like it really cheesy. And don't be alarmed when you take it off of the burner, it is gonna be kind of thin, but it will thicken up just like this did. And that's just a little parsley on top. I was trying to be a little fancy. And then I did not feel like making a green vegetable, so we're not having one. And we're having some garlic toast. This is the garlic toast that we are using from um, Tom Thumb. It's so good and so inexpensive, and I talk about it all the time. We like this one, and then also the five cheese variety is really good. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am making collard and black eyed pea stew. I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. So. For this recipe, you're gonna need two cups of ham. And if you have leftover ham from Thanksgiving, that's perfect. This was in my freezer. I'm not gonna use all this ham. This is way more than two cups, but it was frozen. So I'm just gonna take out two cups of ham. You're also going to need this frozen seasoning blend and it has onions and celery and bell pepper. You're gonna need a can of black eyed peas. You're going to need some frozen collard greens and you're gonna need chicken broth. I don't have any chicken broth, so I am just going to be using my bouillon. So literally all you do is throw everything into a pot and let it simmer. So I am going to um, put everything in a pot and then I will show you um, how it looks when it's done. So here is the soup. I did let it simmer for about an hour. And one thing I did forget to mention to you, I said you just throw everything to, into the pot, but you do need to saute your ham a little bit, brown it, and then after that, you literally just add everything to the pot, and it is so good. And with it, I made these Pillsbury cornbread muffin, or swirls, I should say. You get six, and we've never had these before, and the way you're supposed to make them is to um, grease muffin tins and then just pop the bread in there and so I did and here it is and so this is what they look like and I cut one open so you guys could see it Howard and I tried it so what we decided is that it has the texture of a crescent roll it doesn't really taste like cornbread but it is sweet like a sweet cornbread like a jiffy cornbread and you do kind of um, taste the um, like the cornmeal in there, but it doesn't taste like cornbread. It's really hard to explain. I will say this, Howard is not a big fan of cornbread and he really likes these. These to me are just okay and I like cornbread. So if that helps you at all. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having quick and easy from the freezer. So I have these wings in my freezer. They are from Walmart. I have bought these before, but it's been a long time ago. And so I made them in my air fryer and I only used probably less than half of the um, seasoning packet that came with it. And here they are. And these are really good. And we are also having um, some garlic cheese flatbread as well. I got this from Aldi a while back ago and we really like this and here it is on the cookie sheet and then I am just going to serve this with a little bit of marinara. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time.